Good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Hope you guys are doing well today. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to discuss something about um, oxygenation, and that is uh, that when under normal circumstances, our body um, it, it kind of over oxygenates itself, um, and, and not necessarily over oxygenates, but it takes into consideration that that you may need um, some reserve uh, to use dur during uh, potential critical events. Uh, so when we look at oxygenation. Uh, the reality of oxygenation is that um, your body actually, under normal circumstances, has on the order of magnitude of about four times the amount of oxygen that it, it actually needs. And this may seem, seem kind of counterintuitive uh, somewhat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to kind of describe what's going on. So if you look at the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, um, it will generally look something like this okay and what I have is I have on the x-axis I have my PaO2 that's a partial pressure of oxygen and that'll be in millimeters of mercury on the y-axis I have my SaO2 or uh, my saturation of hemoglobin that's not SpO2 SpO2 is pulse oximetry the SaO2 is uh, measured uh, through arterial gas uh, results and then I have my curve that describes the relationship between my PaO2 and my SaO2. And let's just go ahead and identify um, a couple of points here. So what we're going to do is uh, this point here, I am going to say, and I'm just going to draw the line over best I can, I'm going to say that that point corresponds with a saturation of 100%. Okay. And we'll just say that at a normal um, PaO2 in a person is 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Let's just go ahead and correlate that point, the 100% SaO2, and let's just say that is 100 millimeters of mercury on the PaO2. 100 and 100, that makes it kind of simple, kind of easy. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and we're going to just pick this point right here and we're going to say that this point here corresponds to 75 percent on my SAO2 and then I'm going to draw a line down here and that will correspond to about 40 millimeters of mercury here and we're going to assume that there is a uh, that this is a normal there's not a, I don't have a right or left shift this is a normal um, association or uh, hemoglobin has a normal affinity for oxygen. Um, and to kind of demonstrate that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say at 50%, I have a point here, and that is going to correspond to about 27 millimeters of mercury. And that's called my P50, a normal P50. The, the PaO2 that causes an SaO2 of 50% is 27 millimeters of mercury in a per person um, that isn't shifted. Okay, so now that I've, I've established all that, what I want to do is I want to talk about this point first. Let's assume that um, I'm standing here talking to you and that my uh, partial pressure of oxygen is about 100 millimeters of mercury. That might be a little higher than what it is, but um, approximately, we'll say approximately 100 millimeters of mercury. And let's just say that my um, SaO2 is approximately 100%. It's probably somewhere in the in in the um, 90s, but let's just say on the order of magnitude of about 100%. Okay, it's close enough. Um, and we know that if I measure the PaO2 or the um, SaO2, it's 100%. And then um, when I measure the SVO2, okay, the SVO2, that's a saturation of venous oxygen. Okay, the saturation of venous oxygen is going to be about 75%. So from going in the arteries, it's about 100%, and then coming out in the veins is about 75%. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I've used 25%. Okay, I've used 25% of the available oxygen that's bound to hemoglobin. Okay. So let's plug that 70, and that's actually what I've done here, is I've plugged a 75% down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line across here. So what I'm saying is that this 
space in here from 100% down to 75%. This right here is my O2 use under normal metabolism. Okay, it's my normal oxygen use under normal metabolism. And you can see I'm only using 25%, and what does that leave me uh, left as what we'll call a reserve for potentially critical illness or something um, down here? Well, that's 75. Uh, so the, the reality is that I have this big reserve that I don't normally use under normal uh, situations and circumstances. And under normal circumstances, I'm only using about 25% of the total available oxygen. Okay? So that's just kind of what I wanted to emphasize that, you know, when you see somebody who's critically ill and their their SVO2s are perhaps uh, really low, they have oxygenation problems, um, you know, that really uh, indicates somebody who is potentially critically ill if they've used up all of their reserve. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off here. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, as always, thanks for hanging in there.